I want to start by asking you about the rate at which you're getting through cash. It seemed that in the first quarter you got through 1.4 billion euros of cash. Do you expect things to worsen on that front in the second quarter? How much will you need? So uh, we have uh, got an extra cash on our balance sheet. We have close to uh, four and a half to five billion, so we should be well equipped on our balance sheet. So we don't believe we'll have a cash challenge moving forward. You know, the real question that everybody's asking, how quick will the recovery come? And I think China has been a good uh, indicator in the first quarter what we saw, particularly in the month of March, own retail and our online business growing extremely rapidly. But from a cash standpoint, we're well equipped to go through a very difficult year. Is there any reason that you would then need to, I mean, you've, you've told us previously just uh, in our last interview in March that your balance sheet looks good as well, um, quite strong due to the, the work that you have been doing on it and that you did on it last year. Is there any reason then that you would need to tap state loan programs for help? Yeah, we did that as you saw uh, by the end of March, beginning of April to get an additional three billion, you know, a state back loan that was, uh, you know, the, where the front runner was uh, Unicredit. You know, the, the reason is very basic is that the world has shut down. Everything is closed in the month of April. We couldn't foresee that uh, when we had the conversation in March. And right now we are seeing a very, very slow opening. And that, of course, means that we need a different balance sheet uh, with a closed down world uh, where the view is very different five weeks after uh, when we spoke last time or six weeks after. And I think what we've done is we've done the right precautionary matters and make certain that uh, we have a healthy balance sheet. You say things have changed in the last five weeks or so, Casper, but of course you had a great deal of insight as to what was coming because of what you'd seen in China already. Would it be safe to say that the, the, you've been caught by surprise then in terms of just how bad things have become for Europe and the global business? I think that would be a gross misstatement from your side if you were to say that. Uh, when we went into the second week or the third week of March, I don't think anybody in the world would have predicted that the world closed down within three days. Had that been the, you know, the matter, then everybody would have acted differently. Uh, what we did see was the early indicators. But the world, that the world would close down over three days, I don't th we didn't foresee, and I don't think anybody else foresees. So I don't think that you can put that uh, on the shoulders of editors. What uh, we've done is I, I, that we've I put a balance sheet in to. place that will withstand the issues. I have to disagree, Casper. I mean, I had a flight back home March 15th that I knew the week previous I was going to have to cancel because I was afraid I wouldn't be able to get back to Germany. I mean, you were still buying back shares at that point, and that's made a lot of Germans pretty angry no. that you're buying back shares into March when we all knew the world was going to shut down, and then you're borrowing money from the government uh, from government programs the next month. That's, that's a real concern uh, for Germans and I think for shareholders as well. We stopped our share buyback on March the 16th and that was the week where the world closed down late on. So that's also a fact. So I do think that we have done as many precautionary measures. Uh, that our industry is hit much harder because we are retail and when the retail store closes down, we don't have any revenue. But frankly, I think that uh, it would, as I said in my statement before, I think that right now the world has been surprised about, you know, the speed and the rapidness uh, that the world closed down with. What are you going to be doing now to shore up uh, your, your cash reserves and the balance sheet then, Casper? Are you going to be trying to take on debt to repay that government loan? There had been suggestions that that might be in the plan. No, first and foremost, we need to get the operational business back on track. And we saw a 35% growth in online in the first quarter, 55% in the month of March, and increasing also moving into April. So getting the operational part. And then, of course, we over time are looking upon what are alternative financial vehicles that will allow us to pay the loan back. But the first and primary one has to be that the operational business has to get back on track, and that's what we're working very hard on. And the primary vehicle in the short term is our online business. So you haven't had discussions about raising money with private debt in the coming months? Frankly, these are internal matters I wouldn't put in on a, you know, in a press interview, that, that we have every intent to repay our state back loan as quickly as we can is, of course, uh, very, very natural. But uh, I don't think that would be appropriate to discuss our balance sheet strategy uh, in an interview. 
You mentioned that the first line of defense is to get the business uh, back up and running then, Casper. Uh, how quickly can you grow digital? What kind of replacements can digital become in this era where you've got 70% of your, of your shops closed? No, so what we are seeing is, as I said, a 35% growth in the first quarter and a 55% in the last month. What we are doing is we are reallocating resources across the board into our digital uh, channels, and we are reallocating products. We are you know, increasing our marketing investments, and we are building uh, infrastructures that allow that to take place. That will not be enough in the short term to replace of course, all the physical stores. But of course, we also assume that markets will start you know, slowly opening up. You saw the first signs of markets opening up in the last week in smaller markets across Europe. You're seeing Germany take the first uh, small steps. And I think the rest of the world will be looking upon Germany, what's happening here. And uh, we're seeing a very strong recovery, both in China and Korea. So over time, that will happen. It will not have something that will have dramatic impact in our second quarter which is also indicated in our uh, guidance for the second quarter. But of course, our guidance for the second quarter is a result of an entire month being closed down, namely the month of April. And Carson Spohr from Lufthansa said he doesn't see full demand coming back until 2023. Do you expect it to come back for Adidas <clears throat> sooner than for the airline? We don't guide, but we, believe, we would expect that uh, normalization coming back before then. We actually think that people that have been locked into apartments or houses for you know, four, six, eight, and, and ten weeks, which has been the case in many places in the world, you know, really want to go out and, and, and move and exercise and walk or run, uh, having, uh, you know, being locked up. And I think that the underlying trends for the sporting goods industry with the focus of health and wellness has only been strengthened through this crisis. So in the medium term, we think that will cover, come. You know, in the short term, I think it's a very, very difficult uh, call to make because nobody knows about the speed of opening by country.